Hello, everyone. Welcome to How to Read Chinese Poetry podcast. I'm Zhong Qicai, the program host. In this podcast program, my colleagues and I aim to introduce cutting-edge scholarship on Chinese poetry to a broad general audience. We will present 52 episodes covering the major poetic genres developed over China's long history. Each episode features close reading of one or more of the best-known Chinese poems, with an aim to illuminate their literary greatness and cultural significance. For all the discussed poems, Chinese texts, English translation, romanization, and brief notes are provided at our website, howtoreadchinesepoetry.com. By following the 52 episodes, listeners will gain a bird's eye view of the thematic, formal, and generic evolution of Chinese poetry from antiquity to the modern era. Instruct and delight is what we wish to accomplish in each talk. Without further ado, let's begin. Today we'll begin a new topic entitled Sao Poetry, the Lyric of Chu, or Chu Tzu. It's my pleasure to introduce our guest host, Fu Sheng Wu, Professor of Chinese and Comparative Literary and Cultural Studies at the University of Utah. Professor Wu will present the first of his three episodes on the topic. Let us warmly welcome Professor Wu. Hello, everyone. In this episode, I will discuss Chu Tzu, the lyrics of Chu, which is a type of poetry that flourished in the Chu region during the Warring States period. In the first part, I will provide a general introduction to Chu Tzu. In the second and the third parts, I will discuss Li Sao or on Encountering Trouble, which is the most representative piece of this genre. The poems in this genre were first collected in an anthology entitled Chu Tzu Zhang Ju, Commentary Edition of Chu Tzu, edited by Wang Yi of the Han Dynasty. It contains nearly 60 poems, which can be divided into two groups. The first group is the earlier poems written and compiled according to Wang Yi and other Chinese scholars by Qu Yuan, a statesman and nobleman of the Chu state. Now it should be noted here that there is a great deal of controversy regarding the authorship of these works. The second group consists of those written by later poets, including Wang Yi himself in imitation of the earlier works. The most significant poem in this anthology is Li Sao, or On Encountering Trouble, presumably composed by Qu Yuan. It represents the crowning achievement of the genre. Sao, the second character of its title, is often used to refer to the entire Chu Tzu repertoire. As a product of the Chu culture in the South, Chu Tzu demonstrates considerable differences from the Shi Jing or the Book of Poetry, both in content and in form. In content, the influence of shamanism is most remarkable, as many of the earlier poems in this group, especially the Jiu Ge or Nine Songs, apparently portray shamanistic rituals and performances. This is even evident in many passages of the Li Sao or On Encountering Trouble, a long narrative poem with a discernible and unprecedented autobiographical framework and a voice. Informed Chu Tzu adopts a format that is marked by longer lines than those in the Shi Jing, in the Shi Jing, four-character line is the predominant pattern. In Chu Tzu, 
this has grown into six or seven characters marked by the particle word xi, which serves as a refrain either in the middle or at the end of a line. During the early Han Dynasty, there was a tremendous interest in Chu Ci, thanks to the dynasty's early rulers who came from the Chu region. Emperor Gaozu, the founding emperor of the Han, wrote his famous Da Feng Ge, or the Song of Strong Wind, in the Chu Ci style. Emperor Wu, another powerful monarch of the dynasty, was also a practitioner of the genre. Several princes of the royal family were actively involved in studying, editing, and composing Chu Ci. Liu An, the prince of Huainan, for example, wrote the first commentary on Li Sao or on encountering trouble. Critical views of Chu Ci vary since Han Dynasty. While most critics choose to emphasize his continuity with the Shi Jing tradition and praise Qu Yuan for his steadfast loyalty to his state, there has been uneasiness about it as well. Ban Gu, the author of Han Shu or the history of the Han Dynasty, accuses Qu Yuan of being arrogant, self-flaunting, and using a poetic language that is filled with empty words. Liu Xie, the author of Wen Xin Diao Long, The Literary Mind and the Coming of Dragons, arguably the greatest work of literary criticism ever written in China, listed several features of Li Sao that conform to and stray from the classics and characterize it as uncommon writing, Qi Wen. He also criticizes Qi Yuan's decision to commit suicide, and we will discuss this later. As narrow-minded, throughout Chinese literary history, though, Chu Ci and its main figure, Qi Yuan, have proven to be an enduring presence and influence. As time passes, Qi Yuan became a national hero of China, and Shi and the Sao, Shi Jing and the Li Sao, or the Chu Ci writ large, together came to represent the very foundation of the Chinese poetic tradition. As I have indicated earlier, the Jiu Ge or Nine Songs are generally believed to be songs performed at shamanistic rituals. There are, in fact, 11 songs in this group, and with the exception of two, each of them is dedicated to a particular deity. They are thought to have been compiled and polished by Qu Yuan. The state of Chu, situated along the Yangtze River in the south, was known for its shamanistic practices. Ban Gu once observed that the people of Chu believe in the power of shamans and the spirits and are much addicted to excessive religious rites. The Chinese character for shaman Wu originally refers to someone who allegedly could summon gods and spirits through dancing and singing. One of the essential qualities that shamans claim to possess was the ability to communicate with these supernatural beings. To do so, as they claim, they often must leave their physical bodies to meet with them, either above in heaven or down on earth. Thus, journey or flight is a recurrent motif in the nine songs, and to a lesser extent in Li Sao. The following poem, Xiang Jun, or the Lord of the Xiang River, is one of the most beautiful pieces in the group. The Lord of the Xiang River. My Lord has not come. He is hesitant. 
Who is it that keeps him on the aisle? A lovely lady with delicate beauty. I move quickly on my cassia boat. I order the Yuan and Xiang to calm their waves and command the great river to ease its flow. I look out for my lord, but still he is not here. I play the reed pipes, but who is in my mind? I ride my flying dragon to journey to the north and steer my way toward Dongting Lake. My sail is decorated with fig leaves and melilot. Iris and orchard banners cover my flagpole. I gaze at the northern side of the Ten, far away, and wafting my magic, I cross the great river. Wafting my magic, I still have not reached him. My women are upset and heave deep sighs. My tears run down like small streams. The thought of you makes me grieve. The cassia oars and the orchards sweep on my boat, chip and knock at the ice and snow. I pick fig leaves in the water and pluck lotuses from the treetops. Our hearts are different. All matchmaking is in vain. Our love is not deep. It is easy to break. A stream dashes through the stone shallows and the flying dragon hovers above. Unfaithful relations caused long bitterness. He broke our date, telling me that he had no time. In the morning, I race along the riverside. By the evening, I halt my chariot at the north bank. Birds are roosting on the rooftops and waters are circling around the hall. I throw my jade ring into the river and leave my pendant in the mouth of the lee. I pick lavenders in the fragrant aisle and will give them to my women below. A lost moment cannot be regained. Let us now take our time and roam at ease. There are many uncertainties and ambiguities in the nine songs. In this poem, these uncertainties and ambiguities start from its title. Since the Chinese word Jun is ambivalent in its indication of gender, the poem may be read as addressing either a male or a female deity. Here I have adopted the opinion that this poem and its companion piece, The Lady of the Xiang River, Xiang Fu Ren, form a dialogic exchange between the two deities of the Xiang River, which is the largest river in the Chu region. Being part of a shamanistic ritual, they were spoken and performed respectively by a female in the Lord of the Xiang River and a male in the Lady of the Xiang River, shaman in search of one another. There are several important features in this poem that will be further developed by Qu Yuan in his Li Sao. First of all, the central motif of the poem is a love quest. The quest is conducted in a particular shamanistic style. The protagonist rides on supernatural creatures crisscrosses between heaven and earth and commands the natural world to be at her service. The quest, however, fails in the end because her Lord breaks his promise. This failure produces a profound melancholy that informs the entire verse. It also causes a temporary estrangement from her lover deity. But despite all the disappointment, she remains loyal to him in the end. As we shall see later, Qu Yuan appropriated this motif in his Li Sao and made it into an allegory of his relationship with his ruler and state. Also noteworthy is the use of floral imagery in the poem. Here, beautiful flowers and the plants 
are important components of a shamanistic ritual. They represent the sincerity, beauty, and the solemnity of a religious performance. In the hands of Qu Yuan, however, this special style was given a moral dimension. It became a vital part of his symbolism in the Li Sao. Let us thank Professor Wu for such a stimulating talk. We all look forward to his presentation of the second episode next Tuesday. I hope you enjoy the talk. Let us relax and listen to a reading of the poem in Mandarin. Chu Ci, Jiu Ge, Xiang Jun. Jun Bu Xing Xi, Yi Yu. Jian Shui Liu Xi, Zhong Zhou. Mei Yao Miao Xi, Yi Xiu. Pei Wu Cheng Xi, Gui Zhou. Ling Yuan Xiang Xi, Wu Bo. 始将水兮安流，望夫君兮未来，吹参差兮谁思？驾飞龙兮北征，瞻无道兮洞庭，辟立薄兮会愁。孙饶兮兰京，望岑阳兮吉浦，横大江兮杨陵，杨陵兮未及，女婵媛兮位于太溪，横流涕兮婵媛。隐思君兮悱恻，桂棹兮兰意，濯冰兮积雪，彩辟立兮水中，千芙蓉兮木末，心不同兮眉劳。恩不甚兮，清绝；时赖兮，尖尖；飞龙兮，翩翩；交不忠兮，怨长；妻不幸兮，告予以不贤；朝逞物兮，将高。西米杰西，北主；鸟刺西，屋上；水洲西，塘下；鹃于绝西，江中；夷于佩西，离浦；采方舟西，杜若；将以未西。下雨，时不可兮，在德；聊逍遥兮，容雨。<音>